deeper than music. The core of you, the fans, the truth is deeper than music. Deeper than music. Simply the truth is the latest, the newest is deeper than music. Deeper than music. The core of you, the fans, the truth. What's up, everybody out there in Internet Radio Land? Deeper than music radio. Behind every great song, there's also an even greater story. I'm in the building. I don't know if you guys checked out the, the, the last show. We had Lewis Gray in the building, T-Rex breaking it down. Now we got another associate. We about to have another real interview. My man, Tech Force. I mean, I listen to his music. He's got what I call like life music, where he's bringing you real life stuff and he's bringing lyrics to the form. Big following here in the DFW, uh, in the DFW area. Ladies and gentlemen here at the DFW area, we got my man, Tech Support. Tech Force is in the building, y'all, here on Deeper Than Music Radio. What's up, what's up, what's up? Tech Force, man, so what's going on, man? What's poppin', man? Um, nothing much, dude, I just got back from um, Irving. There is a Dallas Comic Con that was out that way. Mm. So I went out there, met some of the homies. Uh, I'm friends with a lot of artists, man, so shout okay. out to Show Enough Studios, who's uh, I'm affiliated with. Okay, okay. <laughs> and uh, just went out there, bought some stuff, man, probably spent money I shouldn't have spent. Where you get some but, Luke Cage gear out there, man? Some... man? You know what, dude? Nobody had no Luke Cage prints. It's yeah. ugly. Like, Luke, Luke Cage is popping right yeah, now. Yeah, Luke and I was Cage is huge right now, man. But it's not going to stop me from possibly dressing up as a dude for Halloween. Hey, well, not, so I got to find, like, those metal metal things he had, like the old Luke Cage look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. just pop up at somebody's party and scare the hell out of them. Hey, man, you got to have some, some Wu-Tang in the background. <laughs> <laughs> man, that soundtrack was oh, yeah. dope, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, whoever picked the soundtrack for, for the series... They understand New York hip hop oh, to yeah. a team, oh, yeah. especially Wu Tang. Oh, Wu Tang, and they had uh, what's my man? Um, he's always been underrated, man. But Raphael Sadiq. Oh, when he was on the show, yeah, I think he was the first artist the first that artist, they yeah. had showed. And and what's so cool about it is most people started with hip hop. Um, they just started with hip hop. They started it with soul. Soul, yep. They got the feel. They let you know that there is a classic feel to this show, even though it's um, you know, you got. The newness is embedded in it, you know, yeah. technology, whatever. But seeing him up there, I'm surprised they put Tony, Tony, Tony on stage. Oh, yeah. but they that should have. That would have been dope. But they that would have shut it down. But they played the song Good Man, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We good. It's good brothers out here. You that's know true. what I mean? That's very true. That's yeah. very true. So let's get let's get into the. See, I mean, my man, Tech Force, he knows it. Like we about to, we about to get deep. <laughs> I already know we about to get deep. Yeah. So yeah, man. first of all, who is Tech Force, man? Well, Tech Force is an MC. Um, he's a father, boyfriend, uh, black man in America. So that's a lot of things just in what I said right now, especially right now. Oh, what's things going on? on? I like how you said it. You made it more than one dimensional. Yeah. We always, especially in hip hop yeah. and just our culture, we're always seen as one dimensional. So I like that you put that father right there. You know what I mean? First. First. And then, okay, okay, okay. How First. would you describe your sound? like? For anybody that hasn't heard you, like, okay, um, what is what is Tech Force's sound? So, I think we've talked over this briefly. Um, man, I am an old school hip hop veteran. I grew up on a tribe called Quest. Oh man. I grew up on Gangstar. Oh on man. Black Moon. I grew up on the Ghetto Boys. I grew up on UGK. I grew up on um, Ice Cube and Public Enemy. I grew up on everybody and from every coast. So my sound is a culmination of 30 years of hip hop. There we go. That's that's been infused into to one person, and and I swear, um, I try to put a little bit of that in everything I write, and I do it. I think I do it un, unintentionally. You yeah. know, when you when you have so much hip hop that you've grown up on, you start writing some things. Be like, man, Common kind of wrote it this oh, way. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, or, oh yeah. You know, or or Nas kind of wrote it this way. But all these people that you mentioned, yeah, lyrics. Yes. Lyrics. Yes. So you, to the listeners, all the people he, he lists, lyrics, storytellers. There you go. And listening to your music, I got that. The lyrics and the storytelling. I appreciate Thank you, man. that. I Thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. Bring in, you know, I, I feel like the penmanship has kind of just died out in both R&B, both hip hop. It has, man. It um, Unfortunately, you know what, well, I've thought about this several times and Hip hop used to be where it was thousand dollars you made. It used to be where it was hundreds of dollars you made. 
and then somewhere along the line it became millions and yeah. millions. So you got the music companies that are thinking, man, how can we mass market this? Save money. We gotta dumb down the product. And you gotta look at like when you when you come in to a grocery store, you got Nabisco and then you got greater value. And oh, yeah, you got great all value. these other Equal, yeah, yeah, great yeah. value and all these other products. So this the same product produced in different ways and, and it's dumbed down. It may not even be the same quantity, but it's mass produced to make the maximum amount of money. Yeah, you know what you just reminded me of? And I mean, he made good music, but <clears throat> yeah. when you say that, uh, for some reason I think of Beast by the Pound. Yes. Because their music, I mean, yeah. the hi hats was off. Because yes. even now, yeah. as an as a MC and as a producer, I listen to the music, I'm like, this ain't even matched it right. And it's still <laughs> on the radio right now. Yeah. Like the distortion and all that. Yeah. So let me ask you a question, because you named these qualities. As a matter of fact, I asked uh, Lewis, Lewis this question, and he started point, pointing out people here. Yeah. First question is, when did you know that you wanted to be an artist? When was that moment? Can, can you take us back in that time, that, that moment, like, look, this is what I want to do? Yep. Um, it was 1993, and there was an album that came out that changed my entire life called Midnight Marauders. Oh, Tribe Called Quest. I remember being in my older brother's room, and I, I kept stealing his his, uh, his tape deck, his boombox. Yeah. And I remember putting in Midnight Marauders. I still remember this day when it happened, and I put on. Um, uh, the God lives through. Okay, okay. God lives through. So when I, oh my God, oh, oh my yeah, God, yeah. oh my God, it was an epiphany. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. said, man, this is what I, I want to make people feel like this song made me feel. Yeah, yeah. Like I will never forget that day sitting up in my parents' two story, and it was on like maybe a Saturday. And he was working because he was he's like seven years older, so he was out delivering pizzas. But I was like, I'm gonna take this. He ain't doing nothing with this. Yeah. I listened to Tribe Called Quest, that album, and that day I knew either I wanted to do beats, I wanted to rhyme. I didn't know how it was gonna happen. It didn't happen until like maybe 10 years later. Oh, even, but, the, even the beats was nice. The, the Uma, shout man, out to the Uma. shout out to the Uma. And a lot of people don't know that Q Tip was a large part of that production. Oh, team. yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He produced most of their first two albums. Yep, yep. And then uh, Ali Shaheed Muhammad w w had his hand, but the Uma, about the time uh, Beach Rhymes, Rhymes and Life came out, that was prominent when him and JD got together. Oh, yeah, but, Jay, shout out to Jay Diller. Man, man, you about to, man. You, you, you man, stirring man, up like, something. Hey, you said the Uma, because I remember uh, 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 the one that he uh, produced for uh, One Love. One oh, love. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See, people didn't know that Chip had that ability until One Love came yeah, out. Yeah, One Love. And then, um, God, I'm trying to think, because he did Craig Max remix, too, for oh. um, Flavor in Your Ear. Yeah. Nobody knew that knows that. Yep, yep. He did the remix to it. Yep. And so he wasn't one of those flashy, like Jay, like Jay Dillon was. I like how he had, like, pseudonym for his name. He wasn't one of them flashy guys. Yes. In the song of Jay Dillon did this beat. I mean, right. True, true production, true production yes, work. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, man, you named some 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 great people. Yeah. Like, who creatively, who who inspires you? Like, who inspires you? Who who still inspires you? Um, I'm inspired by a lot of people who do hip hop, man. Gangstar was a huge man. influence on me. I because... love uh, Mass Appeal, man. <laughs> That like you can put that that track on right now, yeah, and it still makes people move, and it'll grab other people. Because Premier, I, I just read recently an article on how they they uh, made Hard to Earn, and he broke down every song. Oh, you see it? Okay, okay. He broke down the process, and I didn't know even in that process they got into a fight, like a fist fight on the album. Oh wow! Him okay. and Guru, you didn't think Guru was Guru was like. They were so entrenched into it, you know, but they're boys. Yeah. Um, he talked about the process of each song, but Gangstar, I remember being... Um, oh, yeah, he from Houston, Primo. Yeah. Yeah, he, he went to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Prairie View. He went to Prairie View. And then moved to, to NY and blew up, but that dude, that's a Texas boy. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Um, I used to live out in New England. <clears throat> Shout out to DJ Static Selectors. Shout out Word to all cast. They still they still working with Primo. Static Selector. Uh, terminology. Oh, man. Uh, man. man. Terminology. Up when I lived up in Boston and New Hampshire, shout out to so, Trap Jaw. Grape shit. I mean, I You know them dudes? Yeah. 
Oh man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, static man. selecting term terminology yeah, is so term dope. Is the, the second coming of uh, uh, big pun. Absolutely. Yeah, the second. Yeah, coming. this wordplay is insane. Yeah. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into one of your songs. All right. Which tracks do we got? I mean, which one you want us to spin off first? And before um, we do, just give us an intro of what the. So let's let's go. Okay. So people don't know about me. I'm a big video gamer. Um, I'm, I do a genre of music called nerdcore, which is which Alex Trebek has trashed. Oh, you see, Alex last Trebek? week. Are you serious? Yeah, man. Jeopardy? He went on oh, Jeopardy. There's a clip, dude, where Alex Trebek was talking about. Uh, he was talking to one of the contestants, and uh, she was saying, she says, "You're, you're, you know." He's like, "You're, you're into uh, specific type of music." She says, "Yeah, I like video. Yeah, I like music where it's called nerdcore, where guys talk about video games and and uh, this, and they may not get many girls." And he said, "He said, okay, losers." Wow. So like he said that but in he the same like, oh, breath. Oh wow! So like the whole community of the guys that I do stuff, they like it's an uproar right now. Um, but this song, <laughs> I'm getting into that a little bit to kind of lead in. But anyway, I do songs about video games and, and anime and stuff like that. Um, so this song is called "Ode to the Retro." Shout out to Tim uh, Big Hub Web that produced the beat or Beat Nerd Hub. Okay, so which we, produced a lot of uh, most, of, if not all, of T Rex's stuff. Yeah, yeah. He did that. Didn't he do that <laughs> one with the uh, the Pet Shop Boys, right? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. He didn't do that. I think that was DJ Spin that did. Oh, uh, the one. Um, well, he going off. I'm sorry. He was. He did. About, um, Donald, Donald Trump. And he all did Fools. Cats. Fools. That's Fools. the one. He did Fools. I think he did the songwriter too. I don't know if y'all you guys played that. Um, but he did this beat, and it's so interesting because he took a sample from King of Fighters. Okay, okay, 95, yeah, 93, yes. 95, He yes. took that and then he, and he tweaked it and made something crazy out of it. And it ended up being this track right here. And I, I had to throw in every video game reference I could. And, oh, man, I'm going I'm to I'm be keeping track yeah. right now. Okay, okay. Yeah, and, and the way I was doing it, um, if you hear the hook, it's bounce to the Mario, bounce to the Metroid, bounce to the retro, gamers and we make noise, bounce for the Contra, bounce for the MK. Retro gamers, we will have it. This is our day. So I wanted to do it in a kind of juvenile way. I'm paying homage to juvenile cash okay. money. Okay, the bounce, New Orleans bounce. Okay. Because that's what the that's what the beat reminded me of. Okay, it's kind okay. of paying homage to them. So yeah. Shout out to Neo Geo. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so Tech Force is in the building. Baby. Yes. Get your game on Nintendo, Sega, and all that. Here we Let's go. Do it. That's dope. Uh. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, he made some oh, crazy. for the Mario, for the Metroid, for the retro, and we make noise, for the Contra, for the We gotta, we gotta get a bomb sound bite. A bomb, a bomb sound bite. My man just went through a whole, just retro games. I mean, it just he went through all of them, man. Like, man. <laughs> and then that beat, that beat was nasty, man. It's, Shout out to, to B Nerd Hub. So um, you might know that, that there's like it made me think of this Netflix movie, but it was a video. It was based on an '80s video game. Yes, which, which uh, was video games the movie? It was a movie. Maybe is what you're was talking it, about. Was it Fury? Something. Um, the guy was kind of like uh, Ryu, but he was it was in Miami. But it was it was like a, a Netflix movie they made. Was it based on Street Fighter? She was a cop as well. Man, I, I can't remember the I can't remember the name of it. I don't know. You got to send it to me. It's a video game movie, man. Yeah, it's a video game movie. It was like a movie, but it's he's kind of like a video game character, and it's based in the '80s, and it has like all. Oh, you're talking about um, Kung Fury. Yeah, Kung Fury. Kung man. Fury. That's what it made me think of, man. It's, oh, that's my joint. <laughs> Dude, Kung Fury is like the dopest movie, man. It's 30 minutes long, but it's crazy. Yeah, as hell. no, it's because I it, love Kung Fury, bro. Because it made it made me think of like Street Fighter, Contra. <laughs> Uh, when dude, hey, the, the, the dopest thing about that movie is when dude is driving his Lamborghini and he jumps off like off the top of somebody else, stands on top of the hood of the ride and shoots like three or four people in the air yeah, coming yeah. down. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's chaotic as hell, man. If you ever seen Kung Fury, yeah, please Kung go Fury. watch it. Yeah, it's, it's a nuts. dope movie. And then they even got like an Android, uh, they got an app for it, like a game of, of two as well. But Somebody like, told me about that. It's hard as hell, dude. <laughs> you know, coming out left and right, like, because after the, after the movie, I got inspired. Let me get this app. You know, yeah. It's, it's like a retro game, but there's yeah. too many people coming at you, man. You know what I'm saying? After like oh, man, four you, tries, I just was like, man. Well, you know. What inspired you to make that song? Um, When I heard the beat, man, like, uh, me and Hub had talked about it for quite a while, man, because I said, man, I want you to make me something that's high energy, something that people can get into, and um, 
I don't think I sent him that sample. I think I said, man, just make me something video game and dope that'll be dope for so my, my area. Really crazy. And he just, uh, I think he had a CD. He had a King of Fighters soundtrack because his son collects a lot of soundtracks. Oh, okay, okay. So he just was in there and was like, oh, okay, we got something here. And next thing I know, he sends me that madness. And I was like, damn, I got to step up my writing to match, there you go. That's a to good, match that's this a, beat. That's a producer right there. Producer enhances your... your... He, he made me a better MC by, by making that, that cut. So as I was doing it, I was like, man, I kept listening. I said, man, this reminds me of Cash Money. There's something about this that reminds me of Cash Money, yeah, like a Manny Fresh producer. So that's why I got the bounce for the Mario, bounce for the Metroid. So I got that because it's like paying homage, but it's also you know, grabbing the crowd. Because, yeah. dude... Let me tell you, when I perform that, that's like the highlight of the show. No worry, yeah, I can bet that beat is, man. People, like, they bounce, they start, and and because I sometimes I, I get them ready, I say bounce, and then bounce, and everybody just hop. You got, like, 30 people hopping, looking crazy, you know, people, it, it, but it's, that, but that's what music should make you do. Yep. Music should make you move in, way, in, in, in ways that you normally don't. That's that's the purpose of music, man. Either it's gonna do it mentally, physically. At the end of that song, you shouldn't be the same. I know, right? You should be turned up a little bit, or turned up a lot, actually. Right. And digging so, in your digging in your your cartridges. That's <laughs> it, man. You should, you know. Uh, my my whole thing, man, is is nostalgia. I I am a, I guess I'm a nostalgia artist if you put a name behind. It. Okay. Okay. Um, I want you to remember the times growing up. Um, the times when you were riding your bike to 7-Eleven to get. Uh, a super slurpee and a big bike playing oh, karate man. champ and karate getting some, champ. some Skittles, you know what I'm saying, and a ride yeah. to the house. That's that's who I am. That's what I do. I, I love it because it's 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 me, man. Dope, it's, dope. It's, yeah. So we previewed for the people out there in the internet world that haven't heard of Tech Forces your first time, so we got a little sample. What is your body of work, man? Could you tell us your body of work and what you have done <clears throat> in the game since you've been in? Yes, sir. Um, so when I started out, I was doing a lot of singles. Um, okay. I, I get on with different artists, um, like Capital P's. He was a local artist in Dallas. Um, my first track that I ever like really recorded was with uh, you. Been, you know this artist by the name of Go? Yeah, yeah. Great's absolute true. Greatest. Shout yeah. out to Justin. Yeah, man. That's, yeah, I'm familiar. Sh with Justin. Him. Just shout out Justin, man. That was the first guy I ever recorded with. We did a song called Lifeblood, and, and I reached out to him, because I remember this had to be, shit, 05, and I went to his website, and I looked him up, I said, man, I heard him, I was like, this dude is dope, so I reached out to him. He invited me to, over to his house, and we started just, you know, collectively getting it together, and I produced the beat, yeah. and he used the Shem U sample. I don't oh, know if you remember Shem U from my Xbox. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I took a sample from it, and that was my first kind of foray. It wasn't exactly video games, but just kind of let people know I was at. So he got on it, sung on that track, and uh, it ended up real dope. It's not, hell, I don't even know what the song is now. It's so long ago that I want to do another version. So go to be listening. Let's do a part two. Funny it's that, time. Funny you should mention because actually I'm uh, working on my album sessions on my mind, and we got a song. Uh, oh, we got a song together. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm glad you're here. Cause the guy, I'm gonna call him out, Rabbit. I got, I got open slot for the third verse. So hey, we, we don't. Gonna make it happen. We gonna make Let's, it happen. You know what? It's about time we worked on it. So we doing yeah, it. Yeah, we gonna right do now. It. It's been decided. It's been decided here so, on Diva the Music Radio. We yeah. gonna, we gonna do it. So it's uh, called the plan. Go. That's it. Tech Force and Furious. Oh my God. Yeah. So somebody's head just exploded right now. <laughs> we gonna have to call the the EMT. <laughs> yeah. Have to do the paramedics on the scene. Tech, because Texas work. <laughs> so, okay, so your first joints with Goat, and yes. what, what other? Uh, we also did another track called um, I'm Done that sampled an anime um, by the name of Air, Air Master um, that came out back in uh, early, early aughts. Um, after that, man, I did more one-off tracks, and then before I did tech support, I did an album with, you, you know, a uh, cat by the name of Legend? No, no, no. All right, so there's a brother out here by the name of Legend, um, and shout out to Mike Most. Um, Mike Moses is another uh, artist producer. Okay, that's real big out here. Um, me and Legend, we we first of all, let me kind of back up a little bit. So me, Mike Moses, and Legend met, and we got a group together. Okay, and by the name of it was called Swag at first. Swag at first. Okay. Swag, and then we changed it to Metropolis. Metropolis. So it was a short-lived group. Like that anime uh, anime joint Metropolis, the movie. I 
I, you know what? I st- he named the he renamed the group. Okay, okay. And uh, I'm not sure where the influence was, but it was a dope name. But anyway, we came out with a project. Uh, I think it was Time Is Up or Time or something like that. So it was the first full album, um, really, I put out. So we put that out. We had the group thing. It kind of went its separate ways. Everybody started their own yeah. thing. So me and Legend decided to get together and be a group called Technical Truth. So there's an album, if you go to techforce1.bandcamp.com, it's called Truthful Journey. So that was my first foray into producing. Okay, okay. So some, most of the tracks on there you'll hear will be from me. Um, and then we had that together, that group with Sour. So you, you see a recurring theme with me and groups. You know what I, <laughs> I mean? If you, you know what watch, if you watch Behind the Music, I yeah. Think, but I mean, people go creatively. You know how creative people are. Sometimes there's that yes. fork in the road. It's the fork in the road, man. But you know what? It taught me a lot. It made every situation made me a better MC. So then, um, I think I did some more cuts is when I when I went when I kind of came back because I, I dropped out the scene for a bit, man. I got burnt out. And I mean, that that tends to happen, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Because I know Lewis said he had to drop out, and he I, I, I did too, man. I. Um, I was in uh, New England, like I was going hard, like I was telling Lewis. I, How long were you in New England? Uh, man, I was in New England from 2005. That's when my daughter was born. I was I was only there for about a year, from 2005 to 2006. But okay. at the time, the way it happened was I was in San Diego, and I caught the attention of uh, shout out to Jeanette Eglin and Elmer, Silver Tongue Entertainment. Yeah. She saw me as an artist, and she's like, "Look, New England, that's where you need to be." So that's, San Diego cat. I've heard that New England is New is, England. That's a hot. They Spot treat they treat pop. they treat their artists their regular artists like mainstream artists. Feel like this in 2005, I charted up there with Ludacris. Like I'm I'm the Cold Crush Brothers. I was part of a collective. We were co-signed by Wu Tang called the UN Delegations. Cause I did a track with a Killer Priest. Get out of here. About to be signed yeah, by he the Cold was, Cold he was Crush. Not too long. Yeah, Cold Crush Brothers. Uh, about to be on the Warp Tour. And it was a, with me, it was just like as I got bigger, you got more people in your ear. And right. I just lost who I was. Right. And finally, it was a point where I just I didn't trust anybody. But the turning point for me was I was about to have, I was about to be a father, and it was like we you know what? Some of the stories. <laughs> hey, like you know what? And let's let's face it, babies aren't fed off empty promises. Man. So it's, <laughs> hey, it's about that time. Man, you get you get too real for somebody out there. <laughs> you know what somebody I mean? Somebody ain't ready for that yeah, message. That you you know what I'm right saying? Now. That's some real hey, father stuff. Yeah, that's real. Y'all pay attention, man, because beyond this hip hop thing, the first primary responsibility you got as a father. Mm-hmm. Um, if your voice leaves you today and you can't rhyme no more, you still got to be a dad to somebody. Yep. That's the first and only thing you should be concentrating on. Music will come, but you got to be a dad first. Oh yeah, yeah, you got to, man. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get back into another song here by Tech Force. What, what else we got in the, in the um, last should we do? You know what? I'm a, I'm a keep it in line with the first app. So this first app, this is tech support um, that the the song is playing for. Now this other song, this is the first nerdcore song I ever made. Um, I did. This is not the original beat, but this is a remix done by the by the homie uh, Josh Klopp from Kloppenstein from Seattle. Uh, it's called Level Up, and the hook is real catchy. So we're gonna get into that, and it talks about being a thick hack man to uh, hopefully everything in between. So let's get into that. Man, that Furious was dope. Hey, Please, man. y'all sleeping if y'all ain't trying to get that. Appreciate it, fam. Same for you, man. So, uh, I wanted to uh, ask you, because we was talking about your, in your new upcoming album, Server Crash Part 1. Um, it's out. What can we, out now, what can we expect? What are the collaborations? Just give us the story and um well if you heard tech support man it is very much a uh i can't even say it's all gamer but it's a lot of gamer references it's it, it plays it honestly pretty safe um you get into a little taste of tech force um you learn about my love of games like on level up you learn love about my my, my love of anime on sdf um Mention is Robotech, this old oh, show. Man, Ro- I remember Robotech. Yeah. What? X or Z, man. You remember X or Z? Which one? X or Z. Oh. So, you, nobody remembers X or Z, man. Man, you, you see, you, you reached further back than I did. <laughs> wow. Matter of fact, man, I ain't gonna lie. I'm trying. 
I'm trying to find the, uh, I used to have the die cast Voltron joint when it first came out. Yeah. yeah. My, yeah. My, my, my yellow lion was broke. Do you, kn do you know, I know where you yeah. can find one. Oh man. There Please. was a place that I went to um, last weekend called Retro Madness in Bedford. Retro Madness? And they have mm -hmm. mad, to, like, the dude's got a full size Unicron. Oh wow. Like, you can't find, like, I'm talking about the G1 planet smashing Unicron they got. I was there last weekend. Shout out to Retro Madness, too. I went there. It's, it's a new, um, a new gaming store that opened up. On one side is old school toys. The other side is an old school arcade, and I mean old school. You walk in and you got a change machine. I'm not talking wow. about these cards that you put in like a Dave and Buster's. I'm talking about you put in a five and get back quarters in the, back. Back in the day, you know, yes. Street Fighter Two, you up in the arcade. Hey, so you brought it back to way. Remember back in the day, yes. the weekends you go to the arcade. You know what I mean? Putt putt golf. We don't even we don't even do that no more. Putt putt, putt off for twenty in Green Oaks, I think. Mm -hmm. Our Cooper was my hangout. They had Super Saturday. You come in there with twenty dollars, get you a hot dog, a drink, and like twenty dollars in tokens, oh, and man. you was there all day. But man, we got off track. Okay, so server <laughs> crash. So tech support. You know, you start talking about my love and things happen. Um, so tech support is more like kind of the the first foray into that server crash. I want to tell more about my life. Okay. Who I am as a person, and um, I wanted to get into darker topics. Um, like Warhorn is talking about my fight with alcoholism. Okay. And it ain't even, I won't even say alcoholism per se, but just me needing, like I, I'm not a person that drinks every moment of the day, but okay. having, but needing a drink every day is, is, is an issue. Is a problem. And I wanted to talk about it. So, and a lot of that con this conversation happened with Lewis Gray, who's one of the realest MCs man. I know. Shout out to Lewis Gray. Shout out to Lewis Gray once again. He's like, he's like, Tech, man, you're doing all this great music, you know, you're doing the straight game and stuff. Give them, something. Give them something they can gravitate to and something they know about you. So I said, okay, all right, I'm going to try it. I was like, man, are you sure? I can't write another country song? You know what? I got to tell you yeah. a story, man. This is what you remind, you remind me of. Yeah. Because remember when Buster Rhymes came out, rah, rah. Yeah. So he talks about a story where it's him, yeah. it's him and Q-Tip in the studio. Yeah. And, you know, this is when he came out, like, rah, rah, rah. And Puffy kind of clowned him. He's like, man, the women ain't feeling that rah, rah-ish. <laughs> he said Puffy clowned him, but... It was like, yo, you gotta kinda smooth it out, and that's what yeah. you got the smooth thing. So you know it's kinda <laughs> getting you one of the moments like, yeah. yo, give him the that's real. That's a good story. Yeah, man, and, and uh somehow I sat down and had a um, the dude that did the beat, his name is Retro and Active, he's out of Cali too. Okay. Uh, this white cat that you might not expect be so funky, but this dude got got more soul in him than I've ever seen in my life. Foreign exchange, a foreign. Yeah, he's just he, he's a, he's a, he knows how to play instruments. So there's okay. as much there's a lot of instrumentation in how he does a song. He sent me this beat. He said, he's like tech man. You need to. I was like I started writing to it and it came out gamer stuff. And I said you know what? As I was talking with him, he was like we need to you need to be realer, man. Talk about what's going on in the country. Talk about yourself. Yes. Talk about something. Yes. So I sat down and I wrote Warhorn, man, and, and that came out um, with the first part me kind of convincing myself that I don't need it, and then the second part is that opposite end saying, yeah, you do need it. You're stupid, because I got control of this. And this is something people can relate to, yeah, that have advice. Because people have advice. As a matter of fact, uh, Workspace Woes, man, you had this line, I was researching your music, and this line right here, as a, as a person and as an artist, I get this line. Every artist goes through this. The accolades don't amount to the paper. Man. Yeah. I'm not complaining these thoughts on my verbal labor. Yeah. That right there spoke to me like, wow. Yeah. Because people don't know. And then I, I had to go back and I'm like, all right, you got your indie artist. Because sometimes it is like, matter of fact, I was um, my manager the other day, or actually a couple weeks ago. She was like, well, I see you doing the photography. I see you doing the media. But she's like, I don't see you doing music. And I'm like, I'm always doing music. It's just these other things that, you know, for me, that's the extension, man. Yeah, it's the extension. I'm like, it all, it all daisy right. change. You know what I mean? But yeah. sometimes I feel, especially when I'm coming with the real, yeah. it's like, man, some of my songs, it's like, dang, it just went over their head. And, and people don't understand that this, 
this is a digital age, everybody gets stuff instant. Right. But to create that product, yeah. you're putting out your blood, sweat, and tears. You absolutely are. As an MC, you write, but if you're an MC and producer, right. you, you're doing, I was telling, um, when I used to have a, I still got a label, um, when I used to work with artists, I'm like, dude, when you guys come here, you say your verse and you leave. Yeah. Like, I gotta tweak it, I gotta do the right. instrumentation. You gotta do all that stuff. And now yeah. especially, uh, which leads to my next question, Yeah. Um, that being said, how do you feel about uh, the, the internet, like, and the things such as Spotify and stuff like that? I mean, it gets you out to different people. I mean, we like, I got people in Russia, different countries, it gets us out to different people. But how do you feel about the royalty rates, man? How do you feel about the point zero one two? <laughs> not even, not even a cent. You know what yeah, I mean? Man. It's um, you know, man, it's it's sad when I hear artists say that. When I hear artists say, uh, you know, get a check for twenty thousand plays and it's like oh, fifty man. bucks, dude. Um, you know, I mean, they worked hard on this music and and they. They spread it out to everywhere, dude, and I think it's a, I think it's a hustle. Um, and I say hustle by the record companies. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, because look at it. They getting, they getting more people to get on Spotify and paying you less. Yep. More subscribers, subscribers, so they charge somebody $9.99 to join Spotify. You got 20,000, millions of people yep. that are on here and then they want to pay the artist chump change. Yes, it's chump change. It's a, it's a new hustle and it's sad, man. And I know there's people that are actually trying to change it. Like I know Bono's trying to change it. Yeah, and they got the, um, if you're part of ASCAP, uh, Stand With Artists, Pound Stand With Artists. Yeah, and yeah. I they have, I mean, because it, it's needed and you got bigger artists. It's such a problem. Like I remember hearing about Taylor Swift. Oh yeah, she took her stuff off. She got $9,000 for 48 million. Oh, did you hear about that on Pandora? Um, uh, what was it? I'm happy. Like, yeah. Millions of plays. My man right. got thousands. Right. And it's like what people don't understand in this instant age, blood, sweat, and tears. Right. And I, like you said, I got one that 25000 Right. I got like $10, $20. I'm like, wow. Let's see. Yeah, man, you up there on Spotify, but hey, man, it ain't. Right, it's not, it's not doing that. <laughs> they don't equate to nothing, so you got to, and that's what I was saying, like, now I got to flip other hustles, but make it all daisy chain because... You know what I love to do is it really? I mean, you're doing it for the love. Yeah. It's like a pilot spends thousands and thousands of dollars to go to school to end up with yeah. the first job making less than minimum wage. Oh um, man, that's that's it, you know, and that's um, I work. I, I wrote that song, man. There was a day at work when I was ready to walk off, and I was so tired of that job. I said, "What can I do to bring me back in to make things make sense again?" Um, this album, I wanted to move more into my own production, so it was the first beat I ever came up for the album. I, I believe where um, there was no samples in it. Okay, okay. Um, and I listened to a genre of music called synthwave a lot. Which is kind of pop, yeah, yeah. With a lot of a lot of synthesizers, old like mean, that's, my, that's, my, that's my favorite era. Man. That's my favorite era of like, music because it was organic. So that's when I, I started doing, and uh, it actually led me to make this other song called Eleven about uh, you've seen Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay Netflix. So the character Eleven, I wrote a song about her and got my homegirl to sing on it. And I'm what actually you need to do, man. You need to. I'm meeting. I'm meeting her tomorrow. Cool. And cool. I'm bringing the CD too, and I'm getting a picture with her. There you go. Okay, 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 okay. You already on there, man. I'm we talked you, about this weeks ago. I'm like telling you, man. You, need to, you got there. that anime. Yeah. Man, uh, uh, the video game industry. I feel like. Games sell billions. I'm man. trying to work that angle too, man. <laughs> it's, I mean, you know, you, you have to, when you find, the, the one thing that you have to be as an artist right now is original. Yep. yep. You can't be like everybody exactly, else. Exactly, exactly. Um, that's why it's so sad, man, when I see all these guys come out talking about the same, same, the same, same drug same game, cutter, player, and all this did. stuff. Everybody's done that so you can get this one hit wonder. I don't, I don't come, we don't come from that. We don't come from that cloth. Like I say, the best, the best people are the ones that you can relate to. I mean, yes. Like you said, if you if you tap into the senses, yes. you got them. You know what I mean? And, That's and, it. And it's, uh, David Banner said it the best. Don't chase the light. Shine so bright that you got people coming to you. Man. You know David I mean? Banner dropped so many jewels. Shout out to David, David Banner, Banner for dropping so many jewels. I saw I met that brother one time at A3C in Atlanta. And he was walking past him. 
I was I thought he was shorter than me. Dude is like six five. Oh yeah, yeah, he tall. And, and and he's like swole. So I'm like, hey yeah. man, how you doing, brother? You okay? <laughs> All right, good to see you. That's he got you know built like you, but he's six five. Yeah, big dude. So, but he's but he's an awesome cat though, man. He's uh, I, I got the chance to see him speak, and he drops so much knowledge that I think half the people didn't get it. So um, they didn't get it. What was the best moment in your career so far? Um, our favorite performance, uh, favorite moment, there was a, a convention called Retro Palooza. Okay. Arlington, here. And it was at the Honestly Convention Center, it was last year. And I did a show there. Well, it was the first time that I had a crowd of people that knew what the hell I was talking about. And I say that because I do this game music, man, but you know, you come into a situation when you perform them and nobody played Mario, nobody played Metroid. Yeah, they never, they never, don't know what that, and, and it's like, oh, that's great, whatever. But what is oh, what's about? a floppy disk? Yeah, you know, what's <laughs> yeah. right. But that crowd, they knew exactly what I was talking about. And it was so funny because after, like it was the best performance, my little brother was there. Shout out to Vincent Rockefeller, who was a dope MC. He should be here himself. Um, but he went up there and covered me. So okay. after we, we did it, the crowd was chanting when I was doing Level Up. They're going up, up, down. They're doing it with me. Oh, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, They right. did the, 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 the movements. They, they knew the stuff. And then after the show, I went up to the merch table. So the most merch I ever did. But one guy came up to me, my good homie, Gabriel Ramos in Houston. Shout out to you. Um, dude brought me a Tron. I'm a big fan of Tron. So he brought okay. me a Tron beaded logo that he made. In a light cycle flash drive that he bought, brought me, and he gave me a note. He said, "Dude, your song, New Game Plus, helped me make it through the hardest time of my life, the darkest wow. time of my life, and it was the first time anybody ever told me that. It changed my whole feeling. I thought I was just doing game music, but I actually changed somebody's life, man. And that's what you should be doing as an artist. Message the artist: make sure your music moves somebody in a way oh, yeah. that it changes them." Hopefully in a positive direction or whatever way you want to, you know, you do it. I give it, man. It's yeah, man. The power of the spoken word. Yeah. I like what, what Quit said. Man. So all gangsta rap. Talking to death. You're talking about death. You're talking to spirits. It's there like, you go. And you, I know he's an artist because yeah. I've actually wrote some stuff and spoke some stuff to so life. So you know. And I'm like, whoa, like, you know, the power spoke, of the spoken word. Right. You spoke some things to life and it's like, all right, uh, like people say, like, Tupac. Was prophetic. Yeah, you speak about certain things. Yes, it's gonna come around the corner. It's gonna happen for real. So, all right, another question I have: um, Black Lives Matter, hip hop. Are you think? Are we? Are we? Are we doing enough? Are we not doing anything? How you feel? Um, depends on who you're talking about specifically. Um, so I know that Killer Mike. I know that Ti is doing stuff, but a, a hip hop community. Okay, let's go back to the nineties. Uh -huh. Self destruction. Okay. We are the same game. Okay. Could easily come up with something like that right now. Um, Stetson Sonic was a Stetson. You, you know what I'm talking about. Stetson you, you Sonic. You sucker. You talking? <laughs> Poor righteous teachers. Oh yes, live and learn. Oh, you got to, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, who am I thinking of? Uh, Africa Babata. But it's like we not for the majority. Um, okay, Beyonce said something, but other than that. Well, okay. So here's the thing. A lot of artists are scared to put that out because they don't know how their audience is going to take it. They think that if they talk Black Lives Matter, it's going to alienate a lot of the audience. So I did, and it's funny you mention that, the server press is really kind of a test. I did two tracks or three tracks based on real experiences. I got a song in there called Confessions of a Black Nerd talking about my experiences growing up and being ostracized because I wasn't like everybody else. That was a test. I had white people, Hispanic, whoever come, man, I love that song. I love what you're talking about. So that let me know that they're ready for a song that deals with Black Lives Matter. Sometimes people don't even want to test the waters. If you don't want to go in full-fledged test it, because you got somebody like Kendrick Lamar. Oh, yeah. Man, he jumped in yeah, in that pool then think about it too though man i mean just think about marvin gay let's think about stevie wonder yeah you know, they, they, they was part of that motown yeah the hits boom boom find like no this is what i i just feel like most artists 
Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe we're a couple of different folks. We're, we're passionate about what we do. We are. We see the world different.